Hey y'all, welcome to Peyton Energetics. I'm Peyton, and in today's video, we're going to be doing a follow-up to a video I did two or three weeks ago, where we were talking about how to prepare for contact and communication with your star family. Because let's face it, this is one of the things that we are most excited about as star seeds. We want to reopen that connection with our galactic family and start to actually work with them. So in a past video, I walked you through the five steps that are involved in starting to open yourself to greater contact with the higher realms and dimensions. In today's video, we're going to go a little deeper on that. So today, what we're going to chat about is what galactic communication actually looks like, because it's probably not what you're thinking. So in today's video, we're going to talk about kind of the nuts and bolts of how to recognize when you're actually achieving communication with the higher realms, whether that is your spirit guides, because for lots of us starseeds, our galactic family is part of our spirit guide team. So whether you're looking to work with your guides or make communication with your galactic family, we're going to talk about what that looks like. Because a lot of us, we're doing this all the time. We're just not recognizing it. So today's video is going to help you out in recognizing what higher dimensional contact and communication actually looks like. But before we jump into today's topic, make sure you click that subscribe button and the like button if you haven't done that yet. Now I'm starting to focus in these videos more and more on the nuts and bolts of contact because as y'all know, we have entered the window for open contact, which means more and more contact is happening every day. And we are moving toward what some have described as a major global contact event. So it seems very relevant for us to start understanding what this contact actually means. What does it look like? Because a lot of times our human mind thinks that it is going to be like human forms of communication, that we are going to have a being rip open a portal in our living room and start to talk to us in English. So we have these just natural human understandings of what contact and communication looks like. But we have to remember, we are not dealing anymore with humans. So that process is going to look different as we start to work with our galactic family. So today we're going to talk about what that actually looks like so that you don't miss it. Now, the first thing to understand as we start to open up our abilities and communicate with multidimensional beings, again, this can be your higher self, this can be your guides, this can be your galactic family, whoever you are hoping to start working more closely with. The first thing to understand is as we start to make contact, this is generally not verbal. Now, this makes our human mind freak out a little bit because how are we going to communicate if it's not through words? Because that's how we do it here. But as we start to open up our abilities, many times the first experiences that we have, the first contact is non-verbal. So a lot of times this is because we have resistance in our energy field and issues with our physical bodies that are not allowing energy to flow through properly. And when that happens, it's hard for the higher realms to reach us. So they work with whatever they have. So the way that this often starts out for many people is that they will start to get things like flashes of color or they may get sensations in the body. That's one of the ways that especially our guides start to work with us is they work with the body because they can't break through our ego mind wall. So they've got to work with what's open to them. So a lot of times as we start to open ourselves up to communication, it's not going to be in words. So we may sit in meditation asking for an answer to a question. And y'all, I know I did this so hard when I was starting this practice. I just wanted to hear the voice of God booming the answer to all of my life questions in my head. And my teachers would kind of patiently laugh and be like, yeah, that's not really how this goes. So when we start to open up, a lot of times we think it's not working because we're looking for that verbal wordy 
answer, right? We want an explanation in full sentences. We want our question to be answered absolutely exactly. And it just doesn't work that way at the beginning. Now, as we get more advanced in this, we do open up to much more of what we recognize as normal communication. But at the beginning, it's important to understand that your guides, your star family will work with your body, with sensation, with maybe sound. So using tones and musical notes or buzzing in the ears, which you may have experienced, is one way that we start to receive communication from higher vibrational levels. So always just keep in mind as you're starting this process that it's generally not going to be verbal at first. And gosh, y'all, it would be so much easier if it was but it just tends not to work that way. Now, it is, of course, always possible for you to get verbal answers right away to your questions. And this tends to happen in people who are natural channels, who have a reason for needing to be able to translate blocks of thought into words. So if you are a natural channel, this happens to be the way that I work. But in working with lots of students and clients and doing a lot of training in this work, I find that that's the exception. Most people will see colors. They will get images or flashes. You may even notice you get flashes of light behind your eyes as you're meditating. So just keep in mind that when you start out this process of opening up your abilities, it tends not to be verbal. Another way that the communication will often come through to us is that our guides and our star family will leave us breadcrumbs. So they will talk to us through things like nudges. So you just get that little nudge to watch a particular video or to read a particular book. Or you happen to be having a random conversation with someone and they mention something that is just on point with what you have been asking the universe about. So this is how communication tends to start. So a lot of us, and I know that I did this for quite a long time, would sit in meditation asking for answers and feel like I was getting nothing. So of course my ego mind jumps in going, this isn't working, you can't do this, you're not capable. So one of the things that it's really important to do as you start this is to realize that the answer is gonna come to you through breadcrumbs. That's how our guides and our star family start to work with us. So look around yourself in your life to see where is life putting things in your path that answer your question. Now, number two, another way that our guides and multidimensional beings will start to make contact with us is through the dream state. This is one of those ways they can get to us. So a lot of people, as they start to open their abilities, will start to connect with their star family on what we call the astral, the astral levels. And that, of course, is what you are doing when you are not awake and conscious in your physical body. So paying attention to your dreams is very important, especially when you start to open yourself to contact, when you start to ask for more help, more input from your galactic family, from your guides, because they will start looking for ways to work with you. Now, that leads us to another point. It's very important for us to invite our guides and our star family to work with us, because as we've talked about in several videos, There is something in the galactic community that's known as the law of non-interference, which means that our guides and our star family can't just come tromping into our life and telling us what to do, right? There are procedures, there are galactic rules, and one of those is that higher dimensional beings will not interfere with evolving civilizations like us here on Earth. So because of this, our guides and our star family will wait for us to invite them. So it can be very helpful as you start to open your abilities to start to invite your guides in just with your specific intention to invite them to work with you, to invite them to make more contact with you, because a lot of times they are going to hang back waiting for your permission, because any benevolent being is going to wait for your affirmative consent. So if some being is busting in on you in your meditation and telling you what to do, generally not a benevolent being. So one thing that our guides and our star family are super careful about is waiting to be invited. So if you have been sitting there waiting for answers, but you haven't actually ever invited them to work with you, 
this can be a very helpful start. So just setting the intention as you start to meditate or just take your quiet time, even as you're exercising, going for a walk and just quietly from your heart space, ask your guides and your star family to participate more with you to start to communicate more openly with you. And once you have given them permission and made the request, they are going to start to move in and work with you more closely. But again, they never want to infringe on your free will. So always helpful to extend the invitation. Now, something else that's really important to know as you start to open up your multidimensional abilities is that the experience you have is going to match your belief system. So if you have a lot of fear-based energy going on, if you are a little scared of all of this, then you are going to have an experience that matches your frequency, that matches your beliefs. Because as we know, we cannot experience anything that we are not a vibrational match to. So it is very important as you start this process to start examining your beliefs. And especially to do some work to clear out any fear energy that you are holding around this topic. So if you have that little bit of reservation, that little bit of, oh, I don't know what I'm getting into here. Very helpful to clear that before you start this work. So another way that your experience is going to match your belief is in how this plays out for you. So say, for example, someone has a lot of religious beliefs. So maybe they are very familiar and comfortable with the construct of angels as the first way to make contact with the higher realms. Then it is likely that their experience is going to conform to that belief. So these people may find that their first experiences appear to be with angels. Because again, as humans, as we process higher dimensional information, It goes through the filter of our belief system. Whereas if you are a starseed and you are super excited to meet, say, your Andromedan family, then you are more likely to have an experience that matches that. So your belief system is very important and it is going to be the framework for how you have this contact experience. So taking a look at your beliefs and making sure they are in line with what you actually want can really be helpful here. Because again, we generally can't experience anything that is outside of our belief structure. Now, something else that is important to remember as you start to open yourself to greater contact is that your experience at the beginning is probably going to be very subtle. Now, I know for me, when I was first starting, I would have loved for my Pleiadian family to just rip open a portal in my living room and walk right in. But that's generally not how things are going to go. So the guides are going to start out with being very subtle. They are going to err on the side of being too subtle, which is why so many of us miss it when it actually starts to happen. We just don't realize that that was communication. So your guides, again, are going to work very subtly with you, start to make adjustments in your energy field, start to show you symbols, give you meaning in your dreams, and start to work with sensation in the body. So when you are starting to look for communication, remember it's going to be a whisper. It's pretty unusual for it to come through in a very loud, dramatic way. Because again, our guides are so careful not to scare us. And so is our galactic family. They don't want to do anything to jeopardize the contact process by putting humans in fear. So they're going to err on the side of it being so subtle that you tend to miss it. So always be kind of open to the fact that This is going to be a whisper at first. Then once you have opened a channel with your team, once you are starting to have a flow of communication, you will notice that it gets stronger, that you can hear it much more easily. First, you have to kind of hunt for it. Now, one other thing that I always like to throw into this conversation is a reminder about timelines. So as we know, there is not a single timeline. All of humanity is not on the same bus. And so there are timelines that are going to experience contact with our multidimensional family. And there are timelines and individuals who are not because it is not part of what their soul has chosen. So if you are watching these videos, you are probably on a contact timeline. But it's always important to remember that not everyone is going to have this experience. Not everyone wants to have this experience. So that is perfectly okay. Each of us gets to choose what we're into. And so just keeping in mind that not everyone is going to have the same experience with this process. 
And finally, one last little thought on this topic is that if you're interested in starting to expand your communication abilities, get yourself ready for the contact event that is moving closer to us every day. The Pleiadians in one of the recent POV videos that I did set out a process for inviting more contact. In particular, a process for inviting them to work with you. So if this is something that you are interested in, go back and look for that video. It is in one of my POV videos, I believe. And the Pleiadians gave a very simple process for inviting them to work with you. And it was very lovely. It involved using your heart chakra to send that invitation to your star family. So go back and catch that if you want to start doing this in real time. It was a really beautiful process that they shared with us. So I hope this has helped you get a little more prepared for our inevitable reunion with our galactic family. The more we know about this and what to expect, the smoother the entire process is going to go. So let me know in the comments below, what other questions do you have about star seeds? Drop those in the comment box. And while you're down there, don't forget forget. Hit the subscribe button and the like button if you haven't done that yet. I'll talk to you next time. Bye.